Red Barrel, one of the rarest gemstones on Earth. Red Barrel. Red Barrel. Just Red Barrel. Even rarer than diamonds. Extremely, extremely rare. Red Barrel is an extremely rare mineral. 150,000 times rarer than diamond. It's the only place in the world, and that's Utah. From the Wild Wild Mountains, Utah. The only place on Earth that Red Barrel is commercially produced is in Wawa Mountains, Utah. Gains its insatiable red color from trace amounts of manganese. It is actually colored by manganese three plus. Until now, it has only ever been found in rhyolite, a felsic extrusive igneous rock. But what if I told you that much of what we thought we knew about Red Barrel is wrong? Before we dive deeper, we need to look at the science behind red barrel. Most barrels, like pink barrel, also known as morganite, form in granite, a felsic, intrusive igneous rock that cools slowly underground. It is also colored by manganese. Red barrel forms in rhyolite, a felsic, extrusive rock that cools quickly at the surface. The rapid cooling creates a geological pressure cooker, essentially trapping elements like beryllium and manganese and fluorine in just the right conditions to create red barrel. But here's where things get interesting. Between granite and rhyolite, there's a spectrum of igneous rock called hippobasal rock, formed at shallow depths where magma cools at a moderate rate. Therefore, if manganese is present in hippobasal setting, we have everything we need to create red barrel outside of rhyolite. To prove this is red barrel, I ran a series of tests, and the results speak for themselves. First, hardness. It scratches quartz, but not corundum, placing it between 7.5 and 8 on the Mohs, which is exactly where red barrel should be. Next, I did a specific gravity test. I ran multiple tests on an isolated piece and I got 2.686, a near perfect match to the GIA accepted range for red barrel. Under the spectroscope, I observed a distinct absorption band in the blue-green range, which is another hallmark of red barrel. Red barrel is also known for slight pleochroism, shifting between red and pink hues. Finally, under UV light, completely inert. No fluorescence, just like verified red barrel specimens. So, let's summarize. Hardness, match. Specific gravity, match. Spectroscope, match. Pleochroism, match. UV response, also match. Therefore, if it walks like a red barrel and talks like a red barrel, it's probably a red barrel. But there's one thing that doesn't match classic red barrel, and that's the habit. Every confirmed red barrel specimen has been a well-formed crystalline rhyolite, but this, it's in a massive habit form, which has no clear crystal structure visual. And that's unusual, but is it impossible? No. Because unlike the rapid cooling of rhyolite, a hippobasal environment allows more time for the hydrothermal fluids to cool, just enough to create a rough, massive structure similar to what we see in aquamarines and pink barrels. So, rather than disproving the red barrel theory, this may actually support it. A different formation process, but the same chemistry. A missing link between granite-hosted barrel and rhyolite-hosted barrel. All right, now let's face the facts. If this is really red barrel, it changes everything we thought we knew about its formation. First, it proves that red barrel isn't limited to rhyolite. Second, it means there could be more deposits waiting to be found. And third, it also challenges just how we search for gemstones. Could there be more gemstones waiting to be discovered outside of barrel, hiding in plain sight? And I would say, yes, we can see this. New minerals are being discovered still today. 
uh, Pazoda Tight, which is a new member, a newish member of the Barrel family, was being marketed in 2003 at the Tucson Gem Show as a raspberry barrel. After the GIA inspected it, they found a different chemical composition, still part of the barrel family, but it became a new barrel member uh, gem in the early 2000s, not that long ago. Additionally, a Russian paper written in 2023 highlights that rich barrel pegmatites uh, in tonalite are, and just barrel in general, is incompletely classified. That there are additional classifications of barrel based on its chemical composition, uh, which chemicals get into the lattices, uh, lithium, cesium, and sodium. Uh, and this is in 2023, stating that barrel isn't completely classified yet. Additionally, this paper highlights that in the early days of barrel, uh, identification, we looked at uh, color, uh, transparency, and maybe shape sometimes, depending because of etching. Uh, but now, now that we've got more technology, there's a different layout. And it's what are the inclusion? You know, is it a sodium barrel? Is it a cesium barrel? Is it a, a lithium barrel? Uh, or is it a pure barrel? And these are the new forms of barrel uh, that really need to be looked at instead of just color. But that's just me. I want to know, what do you think? If this isn't Red Barrel, what else could it be? Look at the test results. We need to find something with the Mohs hardness between 7.5 and 8. It grows in a granitic, or uh, it's created in a granitic environment. Uh, it has pleochroisms. It has a band in the bluish green in the spectrography. The, spe the specific gravity is... 2.68. Um, you let me know in the comments what you think it is outside. I've already ruled out quartz, tourmaline, spinel, and pezotatite just based on these physical properties. And everything points to one direction. But what do you think? We need to get out of this riparian area and get up towards the hills. First pegmatite vein of the walk. The actual vein itself isn't always what you want to be looking at. A lot of times um, the associated minerals are in the actual host rock near the vein. Um, you can read about this in the John Sincaucus book about field collecting minerals. I highly recommend it if you haven't read it. Um, but when you have areas where the country rock is eroding and decaying, like we have here in the Peninsula Ranges Batholith, then sometimes the more chemically resistant minerals, such as barrel, um, will survive the weathering process. So that looks like a piece of rough barrel. It's important to be aware of a barrel in its different forms, like the massive habit form of barrel, which is where the crystal structure itself isn't... I need to get my 
rock pick out to get that one. Where the crystal structure isn't very evident because it's all kind of cemented together in one big massive piece. If you do a search for a polished barrel slab, you'll see stuff online where one of the properties of barrel is, it's kind of hard to get on camera here, are um, these streaks, these cobweb type streaks and crosses. It's faint, but that's pegmatite vein number two on this walk. And pegmatite veins aren't always super visible, but you can have there's signs that it's below our feet right here based on the float. So pegmatite vein number three was under our feet. Pegmatite vein number four of the hike is right there. Oh, there's another one. Pegmatite vein number five. Pegmatite vein number six of the hike. Also, the soil is very red. Um, I've done other videos at this particular spot. And I have found some incredible pieces. Incredible. Now I know most people won't believe me, but that includes a rough red barrel. Or actually several, many rough red barrels. That's impossible. Red barrels only in rhyolite in the Wawa Mountains. Okay, what is rhyolite? Rhyolite is an extrusive form of granite. An intrusive and extrusive is a scale, right? Way below the Earth's surface and above the Earth's surface. It has to do with the heat that'll be, the cooling, the pressure, but somewhere in between extrusive and intrusive is hippobasal. All barrels occur in granitic pegmatite. Or most, let's say most, except for red barrel, is only in rhyolite, which is the extrusive form of granite. Right? Do you see where I'm going with this? If you're somewhere in between extrusive and intrusive, and you have morganite, which contains the manganese that colors red barrel and morganite, you have everything you need to create red barrel if you're in a hippobasal environment, in between intrusive and extrusive. You're now getting the heat and pressure right in between. Up here, extrusive rhyolite, that's your Wawa Mountain Red Barrel. But what about something that's going from a granite into a rhyolite and you've got the manganese? Pick my type A number seven, or am I at eight? I've lost track, but it goes, goes up there. Vein number eight. So these little natural erosion ditches are usually a good spot just to look as you're casually hiking because it'll collect things naturally. And I was walking up, I, where was it? It was over here. Nice chunky piece with what looks like to be some black tourmaline. And some little black tourmalines. Get that.
Wow, just sitting right there. Looks like a rough morganite in the massive habit form. This whole hole, this whole little pit should be dug out, but that'll have to wait for another day. My pack's full.